Let's do it. All right. So welcome, welcome guys. Welcome JT to the um, Feel Live experience. Thank you for jumping on today. Pleasure Thanks. to have you here. Thank you. Thank you both. Like looking at you, your brand is called Feel Alive and I see l so much life in you too. You guys are the greatest role models and leaders for your tribe. So thank you. It's, a, it's an honor. Thank, thank you. you. It's, um, it's really funny because you were actually one of our first mentors, I think, with yeah. this whole What's mindset that? kind of journey. Yeah, I think so, what was that like two years ago now. I think I reached out to you. Mm. I remember yeah. coming to have lunch with you in Burley. Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> I remember Dan came home and he's like, oh, I really like that dude. I really aligned with him. <laughs> like, I loved his energy. <laughs> so it was good. Yes. It was good. Yeah, no, that was a good day. That was the start of it all. Yeah, yeah definitely opened the doors for us. So. Um, so first of all, did you want to share a little bit about yourself, where you've come from? Um, I know you've got a huge resume of amazing successes like um, Guinness World Record holder, you're in the military, all of that sort of stuff. So do you want to share with us like where you come from, what you're doing now and what led you to who you are? Being the epic high performer that you are. <laughs> I come from... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, I was born in England. I've lived in New Zealand since I was 10 until 26, and I've been in Australia since then. But really, I think my life all sort of started when I got expelled from school when I was 16. I was just, I was a good, I had a good, like I'm a good soul, but I was just a bad kid. I just didn't work <laughs> at school. So I got expelled and fell into drugs and alcohol and that, that, yeah, that went on for like a year. And I talked to my dad on the phone. He lived in England and I lived in New Zealand. And he, um, I, was, I was high. Like I'd taken some drugs when I was talking to him. And my dad's like this, the highest morals of anyone on earth. And like, it's insane. When people meet him, they're just like, well, your dad's just so fucking amazing. And so he had these high morals. And here was me high. And I was like, I got to change. I got to change. This is fucked up. My friends were starting to commit suicide. They were smoking methamphetamines. I was smoking it as well. Um, and it just got to the point where something needed to change. So I'm going to give you the condensed story, by the way. So I joined the military the very next day. I got on the phone to the military that, the, you know, I woke up in the morning after talking to my dad and I just joined up in the army. And <clears throat> I've always been, um, I've always been driven. Like you guys know me, like, Mm. super high drive and I've always had that but I've never just channeled it properly and then when I channeled it into the military I actually became like quite a good soldier and um, then became a physical training instructor which is you know there's a selection process for that and then I went and I topped my physical training instructor course so I came um, like top student got distinction and that was against some people that I really rated and still rate like I these people are freaking incredible humans still some of my best friends and they're doing amazing amazing things um one of the guys is he's like one of the world's strongest men but he's also like an ultra endurance athlete like that does, isn't isn't yeah. Normal. <laughs> yeah. Okay? yeah he's playing at both ends of the spectrum he's done crossfit he was mr junior mr olympia when he was um well he, he came third in the junior mr olympia so this guy's a, a machine and um, so, so i topped the course and that like gave me confidence that I'd never had before because I looked up to these people and then all of a sudden in this realm of fitness and you know physical training I just I just like outperformed them mm -hmm. and that gave me and one of the guys was like a professional rugby player who, who literally was getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to play rugby and I I edged him right so that helped my confidence a lot and you know when I t coach people now through any area of life the biggest thing is when evidence supports what we want, like it, it mm. really encourages us to uh, believe in ourselves more. And so I just started believing in myself from that day on more. I went on to train the New Zealand special forces as the physical training instructor. And then um, like momentum grew. I started getting into personal development books and I outgrew the military and I was like, I want to do this on my own. I went into personal training, my first business, um, it didn't fail, but I, I, I had a business arrangement and that broke down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had a bit of a punch up. <laughs> <laughs> and that, yeah, I walked away. That was like $13,000 in and I walked from it. Mm. And then I went and I set up, uh, I borrowed some mm -hmm. money. I had no money left. I left it all behind in that. 
borrowed some money and set up a CrossFit gym. That went really well. I competed at CrossFit. Um, so when I had that personal training business, I was bodybuilding and I won New Zealand nationals. So I sort of, it, it's not like the pinnacle pinnacle, but I, I got to a really high level really quickly in that sport. And then I moved to CrossFit when I opened these CrossFit gyms and I got to a really high level in CrossFit as well um, and competed at regionals three years straight. Um, and the gyms did really well, sold the gyms and moved to Australia. And then I, like, that's where it was like six and a half years ago. Now it all started to unfold moving to, as you guys knew me, um, I, I was just transitioning out of another online business. I started, um, I'd done the Guinness world record. I achieved that. And mm -hmm. then I moved into mindset and, and, you know, that was two years ago now when we chatted, and ever since then, I've just been really growing myself as a coach and growing my business. Mm. And to anyone listening, sorry, that was long-winded. We'll get to the meat soon, I'm sure. <laughs> That's good. Totally. And you're, you're now speaking in front of huge crowds, aren't you? Well, they're getting bigger. I've got an online event next weekend, which is they're going to have probably about 20,000 people. Holy so, shit. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, it's getting up there. Yeah. yeah. Which is... Which is it's funny, like, and for anyone listening as well, yeah, that, that to me was a dream not long ago. And even as I sit in my house today, I'm like, what was I doing? I was doing something and I was like, wait a minute, dude. Like three months ago, this was a dream. Mm. And the, it's just funny that dreams fucking come true. Like they mm. really do. And so, yeah, the, I, I, today I was sitting and I, was, I can't remember what it was specifically, but I was like, you know what? You're actually, you're actually doing it, John. You're actually mm. doing it. And I was like, don't ever doubt your ability to create your wildest dreams. Just, you know, don't be in a rush. Just take mm. your time and all of it's going to happen. So know what you want. Don't doubt it. And it's yours, you know? And so, yeah, today was great when I really re-realized, -re you know, that it, it was more confident. Like you're doing the right thing. You're doing the mm. right thing. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's like, like sometimes you just need that, um, that courage to back yourself, don't you? Like, like I, I remember the first time that I ever sat down to like write out a big business plan, like a 10 year business plan type thing. And, um, I went and went to this big seminar and he's like, you know, just, just do whatever you want. Like sh if you're aiming for the moon, shoot for the stars type of thing, like make it so big, so wild. So out of this, out of this world that it scares you. And I was like, is this stuff like real? Am I going to really start achieving that? And like last year, um, moving into this year, like I've still got the thing on my wall and I'm like, holy shit, it's starting to like come into place. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's amazing. But, yeah. Totally. It's, cool. it's a cool totally, feeling. Man. It's a cool yeah. feeling. Mm. Yep. I don't know if you guys know, but I, I do a thing called a book of life. I don't have mm. any here. I don't think. And I get my, um, like the people I coach to do them too. And, it's like a vision board, but on total steroids, like the most steroided vision board you've ever seen. <laughs> it's really incredible. Um, and I've been doing it for 13 years now and I can look back through my old goal setting. It was like buy first property, you know? Mm. And then like within the book of life, cause it's, it's, it's an A5 clear folder. Oh yeah, there's some here. Actually, this, it's like an, this is like an A5 clear folder. So it's got clear pages. Yeah. So you, each time you update it, like every year or every three months, you slip a new thing in. And so all your old ones are still there. And it was like, I looked through it the other day and it was like, holy crap. Like my goals, even though back then they were really big, I look back at them now and I'm like, oh, this stuff's easy. Like, <laughs> you know, and it just, it's like growth is real. It's, it's a lot of people get stuck in a loop in life mm. and don't get ahead. And, um, like with a few tweaks to what they're doing. Yeah. hundred you know? percent. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what would you, how would you describe to someone who's listening? What exactly it is that you do? Like, what is, what is it? Well, I'm, I'm a life coach. Like I'm a life coach, but that is so broad now. And yeah. there are so many coaches. And so I'm like, how do you stand out from the crowd? Because, you know, there are some other great coaches and there are some other people that are not so great and maybe they're just beginning. I don't know, but it's very hard to separate myself from others, um, like linguistically in yeah. a sentence or with a, in a name. But really what I do is, is I, I do help 
people business coaching, but that's not what I do. I help people with their mindset, their emotions that are holding them back from greatness in any area of life. So if they're struggling in business, I will be able to, you know, I've got the tools to be able to help them with their, you know, their mind, their emotions, mm. because, you know, business isn't, it's like strategy. If I gave someone the perfect business plan, fuck, I gave you guys a perfect business plan, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. And like you said, it's like, oh, it's like a, a year and it's happening. If, if, if there wasn't fear or if there wasn't doubt, if there wasn't uncertainty, someone takes action so much quicker. So mm. even with the perfect business plan, even with the perfect wealth plan, even with fitness, with the perfect training program, if there is a person doubts themselves, if they don't have resilience, which this is all mindset, all emotions, if that is out of whack, it doesn't matter how good the plans are on the outside, you're not going to go very far. Mm. And so that's what I do. Whether it's professional athletes, celebrities, it is fix the mind, fix the emotions so that someone can excel. They can be a high performer in whatever it is they do as mm. a mom, as a dad, as a lawnmower man or woman, or mm. as a, you know, an Olympic athlete. Mm. Yeah. So true. Hey. Yeah. Buddy earth. So like, what would you like, what, what makes someone a high performer? Oh, Danny boy. Um, <laughs> so really, honestly, I think the biggest thing is, is that someone, you have to have a vision of what you mm. want mm. and that, and that mm. needs to be supported by a very, very powerful why. Like why, why are you doing this? Mm. Why, why do you want to build um, an online brand, you know, to help people transform their lives? Why does someone want to play? And until you've, really built that why and for some people that happens um i want to say automatically and by that what i mean is what i mean what i mean is <laughs> some people might have like a troubled youth and they might have nothing and they might be on the streets and through that um constant struggle they build resilience and they want to get away from maybe it's poverty or they want to get away from being mistreated so badly that it lights a flame in them and they just automatically lit. Some yeah. people have a very comfortable upbringing and comfort is the enemy of execution. Like if you're comfortable, you're not going to make any changes. And I've got, I've got people that I know that are comfortable. They earn good money. They've got a good partner. They've, you know, they've got a house. They're, they're comfortable, but I see talent in them and potential. And beyond anybody who's started with less or st but they just they lack drive and why because life's just easy mm. and so for some for someone like that they need to cultivate it they need to start instead of being motivated you guys know this like you can either be motivated by pain or pleasure mm. pain is a fantastic motivator like people make massive changes through not liking where they're at or who they're being and boom they can transform. You know, someone looks in the mirror and they're overweight. They're like, fuck this. I'm sick of this. And, and that's just motivation. I'm sick of, um, yeah, I'm sick of being unhealthy. I'm sick of people looking at me in disgust. And like that can motivate someone. Mm. But if someone's comfortable and they're like, I'm good, you know, everything's, everything's okay. There's no motivation. So that kind of person needs to be motivated by pleasure. It's like, well, what else is there? Mm. You know, or how can you help others? find something that that is pleasurable find something that you want to go and do because you love doing that is that's how motivation can pull us forwards yeah mm. yeah hugely and do you um you find like because i know i experienced that like when i went through like my big transformation three years ago three <laughs> maybe four years ago it was like this came out of a time in my life that was um you could say it was quite dark and throughout that period i stacked on like so much weight and I still remember the exact moment where it was, I was just like, Holy shit, I've got to, I've got to do something. And I was at dream world, went down one of the roller coasters and they took the photo and it was after we went and got the photo and I, I was looking at myself. I was like, I can hold in. Like I've got to, I've got to do something here. Mm -hmm. And I found for me, like that pain initially was like, boom, like a rocket. I've got to go and take this thing. But like, I found I got to a point where it's like the pain, the motivation of the pain sort of drops off. So do you find that people eventually need to find that, um, that inspiration to keep pulling them towards what they want after the pain's dropped off? 
Absolutely. For yeah. sure. Like if you put your hand in a fire, it hurts. So you pull it out. But as soon as it's out the fire, you, you stop moving. You're like, ah, mm. oh, the pain's gone. So you stop. And another way to think about it is the donkey analogy. If you whip a donkey on its bum, it will move forward. But as soon as you stop whipping it, it will stop. Mm. Or you can sit on the donkey and dangle a carrot in front of its face and it will never stop. It will just keep going forward towards what it wants, right? Mm. So as soon as the pain stops, people stop. Mm. Um, and there's always something we can... This could go really deep because then we could start talking about the ego and the fact that really pain-based motivation is based in ego. Yeah. And, you know, is ego good or a bad thing? Is it a neutral mm. thing? Like, what is ego? And then being motivated by pleasure... Um, yeah, we could go deep. So it depends how deep and how we can long. go deep. We can go deep. Well, ultimately the ego is the ego is who we think we are. It's our identity and the ego has two parts. It has the part that you, you kind of know about and then it's got the shadow, which is the part you repress and the part you deny within yourself. I did a post the other day on my social media and it was funny. And I said, I used the word coward. And I got all this hate mail. People like, you can't call someone a coward. That's not very nice. <laughs> and, and, like, and I even said in the post, I was like, I know it's not a nice word, but the truth is that behavior is cowardice. And to really be successful, you need to have courage. And I wasn't having a go. Like, I'm a coward sometimes. Mm. You guys are cowards sometimes. Everybody has the ability to be a coward. It's not a bad thing. Mm. And so, so... If I said, I'm not a coward, that is, that's my shadow. And that is going to come back to haunt me. If, if we're suppressing a part of ourselves instead yep. of being, being our whole selves. I've been a coward when it comes to asking women out before. Like, if, you know, if somebody bloody put parachute on me and said, jump off that cliff, I probably wouldn't do it. And that's <laughs> yeah. like, that's cowardice behavior, right? Yeah. And it's like, uh, I'm okay with that. I can be a coward. And so once, yeah, when it comes to, when it comes to the, the ego and the shadow, the shadow is normally the part we, we're unaware of because we've suppressed it for so long and we deny that part of ourselves. Mm. And when it comes to motivation and the ego, <clears throat> if, we, if we are like, if we're, we perceive we're being judged by others. So maybe we'd, let's talk about someone who might be overweight. If somebody perceived that, so they would be like, I'm overweight and they believe that about themselves. And there would be a story that goes deeper than that. That would be a thought. There would be a belief that underpins that, which is like, if I'm overweight, that means nobody likes me. And if nobody likes me, that means I'll never be loved. And that's mm. like, oh, that's pretty deep. Mm. If you'll never be loved and love is, like human currency mm. that's going to motivate you right another thing is is like if i'm overweight um then uh, you know then i'm, I'm not good enough I, i'm ugly yeah and if i'm ugly like i'm not good enough yeah and so these are really deep things and that feeling of not being loved or that feeling of not being good enough can be fantastic motivation but it's based on a on the factor that you don't love yourself mm. which is like it's a double-edged sword so it can get you moving but through that that type of motivation will never lead to fulfillment mm. because you're always doing it to fill a void of i'm not good enough so i need to do this whereas if if you feel whole and i don't just mean say yeah i'm whole you know i mean like <laughs> You wake up and you feel whole and you're like connected to spirit. You're like God, like God-like. Yeah. Mm. That's a place of like wholeness. And so you then are not motivated by not being enough. You're not trying to fill a void. You're motivated then by, it's probably going to look like contribution, helping others. That's mm. what it will probably look like. Because once you're full, once your cup is full, so to speak, you can pour into others. Whereas a lot of people, myself included, for many, 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 many years, and even still sometimes now, it's come from a place of not good enough. Even my Guinness World Record came from a place of not good enough. And it just plays a perpetual cycle of you reach a goal, you still don't feel good enough because there's always someone else better. And that is ego motivation. And yes, 
it can make incredible results, but until the, the switch flicks and you go, oh, wait a minute, I don't need all those results to be good enough. Like I mm. am good enough. Mm. Now I'm, now I'm free. I'm emotionally free because I don't get, I don't, I'm not guilty. I don't have fear because I'm already whole. I'm already good enough. And then moving forward, that's where fulfillment and success exists. Yeah. Ego, mo- ego motivation is predominantly just success and achievement without, um, without the fulfillment. Yeah. And I guess like that, that kind of would tie us into one of the next questions that we had, like, cause for you to feel fulfilled, you want to be ticking off the things in life that you value. Like you want to, want to make sure that you're hitting them values and fulfilling those. So like, what would you say, are there any standouts values that you see a trait along high performance? Like, is there something that sort of keeps showing up in your... Yeah. First off, I wouldn't say ticking off values. I think there's something you live by. You know what Mm. I mean? They're they're not something to achieve per se. Mm. It's imagine a, 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 like a liter bucket. It's, it's not either full or empty. It can be a little bit. You can like the value can be present in your life a little bit or a lot, like a scale of one to 10. Yeah. So, yeah, for, for success and achievement, there are definitely some values that will be present. For fulfillment, fulfillment is pretty much living by 